Welcome to Bad Accent Reviews, the YouTube channel of Asian Movie Pals, where a number of people from all over the world with truly lousy accents will review the Asian films that we love or hate. The first film we are going to review is Low Life Love, Adam Torell and Third Windows' first solo production in Japan. Low Life Love is a no-budget film about no-budget films and the people surrounding the industry. However, if one expected any kind of glorification, he is in for a treat. Ted Cho is a film director who had a mild success with a film he shot some years ago, but has not produced anything from that point on and his life is in shambles. He is 39 years old, he still lives with his parents and sister in a small house and is in constant lack of money. His minuscule income comes from some overpriced acting lessons he gives to a number of students he has promised to include in his next film, and from shooting AV videos that he sells via his assistant named Yoshihiko to some Yakuza. Eventually, Hope appears in front of him in the faces of two new students. Minami, a timid and naive girl who wants to be an actress, and Ken, a scriptwriter. Both of them appear to be extremely talented and Tetsu believes he will, be finally, he will be finally able to shoot the film the way he wants to. Around those characters roams Kida, a suspicious producer and former director, Kyoko, a ruthless aspiring actress, Kano, a former indie director who has become commercially successful, and Kaede, a girl obsessed with Tetsu. Eiji Uchida centers his film on the two words of the title. The first one actually describes the various characters appearing in the film, not one of whom appears to be decent or unselfish. The one in the top, however, is definitely Tetsu, played in a suitably awful fashion by Kiyohiko Shibukawa. His character is immature, lazy, devious and in constant readiness to exploit each and everyone around him to achieve his goals of shooting a film, earning money and having sex. Accordingly, he tricks girls into sleeping with him by promising them roles in his films, he steals his father's pension, he tries to enroll in a Christian church in order for them to sponsor him, and he exploits Yoshihiko and Kaede, who are unconditionally faithful to him. However, due to some circumstances occurring later in the film, he becomes the victim and subsequently presents another self that is not that awful, thus managing eventually to become a likable character. Kida, played by the smooth as always Denden, is another product of the specific environment, trying to exploit anyone who comes across his way, although he somewhat differs from the majority because he has managed to accumulate money and produce films thus placed in the top of the food chain, above the filmmakers. In the lowest level reside the female actresses who are willing to constantly make fools of themselves in front of directors and are even eager to have sex with them in order to be cast. Kyoko, who even vets directors after bringing them home and before she sleeps with them, represents a distinct example of this tendency. Minami initially appears to differ from the other girls in the field. Soon though, experiences a radical metamorphosis in one of the film's most shocking aspects. Lastly, Kanji Furutachi plays Kano and utterly disillusioned about the industry director that acknowledges the fact that he has sold out his artistic integrity to make money, although his tactics toward women do not differ from the rest of them. Most of the messages Uchida wants to communicate are presented through him and particularly the reason why all of the aforementioned keep on struggling on this awful field. The answer is because they love filmmaking, not in a pure way though, but like the love an addict has for drugs. This message is where the second word of the title finds its meaning. Obviously, the overall depiction of the no-budget industry is gruesome, especially for actresses, who are presented as prey for the male filmmakers, particularly because they are intent on sagging their way into movies. The approach the director takes towards them boards on misogyny, although he stresses the fact that since the directors are not even slightly better humans than they are, sex is actually the only way to make it. In that fashion, Uchida presents another pessimistic message, that of total hopelessness in the industry for them all, a notion that becomes even more evident in the ending scene. However, 
Somewhere in all of this, Uchida managed to include some humor, chiefly through the behavior of Tetsu, Kida and Kaede. One of the most hilarious scenes of the film takes place in Kaede's room, where she keeps a picture of Tetsu's head in the wall, occasionally writing her opinion on him on it. In the technical aspect, the film looks quite good considering its budget, with the cinematography focusing in the realistic depiction of the harsh reality Uchida wants to present. Unavoidably, most of the scenes are shot in interior sets, although the fact is not bothersome by any means. Music is scarce, however, the performances by Zeros in the beginning and the end of the film are wonderful. Overall, Low Life Love is evidently an overachiever, owing its prowess in the magnificent cast led by Kiyohiko Shibukawa and the pull no punch script and direction. How any feminist would perceive it though is a whole other issue.